it is uh, common among all of us as a habit that we always want somebody in our life who understands us, who loves us, who shows forgiveness. When we are really in a deep trouble or when we are having some unhappy situations, you look for somebody to sympathize with you. If the world is so cruel, nobody is there to listen to you also. You feel very left out. Most of the suicidal tendencies which we see in people are those people who are deprived of a shoulder to cry. That's why I read somewhere, if you are in a, going on a highway and you feel very, very sad, what you should do? You should go to the shoulder and cry. <coughs> <laughs> So, we want some shoulder to cry, somebody who would not judge us. Always we are so apprehensive that if I say about my problem, somebody will start judging me from that standpoint. And that's why most people don't even open their mouth about their problems, and especially Indians. You know, in other cultures, they have this group there they come come together openly discuss about their issues seek help seek assistance at least open up so that the burden is reduced but it so ha happened at least we think that indians or especially hindus they never share their even to the near dear ones also we bury it in ourselves and worry. We don't open up. And so we rarely would take somebody into confidence. Maybe a doctor. It is a three people in your life you should not hide from. One is Bhagavan. Second is doctor. And third is Guru. These three people wouldn't judge you. Because the doctor knows he, they, day in and day out he will listen to these woes and problems. So he cannot, you don't doesn't have time to judge anybody. She or she doesn't have time to because it constantly comes. Whom do we even remember? A guru doesn't because his only interest is to relieve you out of it as quickly as possible, to give you the Freedom from your own problems. So he won't judge. Bhagavan, he created everything and he knows. Vedaham samatitani vartamanani cha arjuna bhavishani cha bhutani. I know the past of all beings, present as well as the future. So to me, from me, you can never, actually you can never hide from me. Bhagavan says, you nothing you can hide from me. Because I am there, closest to possible I am there. Even if you don't say, I know it. Therefore, Bhagavan is Daya Sagar. Even if you know human being is there in your life to whom you can confide, Bhagavan say you cannot hide. He is there watching every moment of your action, every thought that is passing through your mind. Think about it. Somebody knows every thought that passes through mind. You, know, you feel very scared of that person. But nothing to scare about because Bhagavan is not a person who will judge you of that. <coughs> he knows why you are thinking the way you are thinking. So, Bhagavad Gita says, Bhagavan is Daya Sagar. And therefore, Gita is Daya Sudha Varshinyai Namaha. 
Daya Sudha. Sudha means nectar. There is a difference between sympathy and compassion. <coughs> sympathy is when you are in trouble. Somebody is considering you. That is called sympathy. Whereas compassion is not specific to a problem. Compassion is where a person in general loves, forgives, accommodates, irrespective of what happens to you. In other words, even if there is a person who is full of ego, Bhagavan will have compassion for that person also. Not that that person has to be in trouble <coughs> or he may not even know that he is in trouble because of his own ego. Bhagavan can show compassion <coughs> even if the other person does not seek it. Even if the other person thinks that I do not need anyone. Bhagavan says, even if you don't need it, I am there. So, Daya Sudha, the nectar of compassion coming as a shower. See, in your backyard, you may have sprinkler system to water your plants. You go to a forest, where is the sprinkler system? Most of us are able to breathe because of the greenery that is watered by the Lord. When Bhagavan starts pouring out rain, uh, he says, I am the one, actually you are pouring out rain into the entire world. Making sure that this whole creation is taken care. Uh, I am the one who is making sure that all greeneries are watered, nourished, productive. Even if you don't go and water anything. For the birds and animals, who is giving the food? You. So many different species and thousands and millions of them are there. They are all surviving in the same world where you and I survive. And are we feeding each one of them? Are they depending on you, you think? Many people think, oh, if you don't take care of the dog, it will die. It will not. Bhagavan will take care of it. Because you want your pet and because you are getting bored with your spouse. Bhagavan will take care of all living beings because he created it and he knows what he is doing. Unless we stop abusing them, that is important. You don't abuse them. They will be surviving and they will be taken care. And even before human beings came, they were also there before also. They are taken care. We only pollute the water, pollute the air, pollute the land and make sure that they are all suffering. <clears throat> now, one more interesting thing about Bhagavan is, he is not judgmental, first I said. Second is, he is not the one who wants to be praised for what he does. See, we always do anything we expect in reciprocation. Say thanks at least. <laughs> we want somebody to acknowledge what I have done. What we have done to others. Please acknowledge that you have received something from me. Bhagavan does so many things, but he doesn't expect anyone to acknowledge that also. That is compassion. You see, without expecting in anything in return, doing for your welfare, sarvahita chintakaha, doing things for the sake of everyone's benefit, even as he does, he does not expect anything in return. And in Bhagavad Gita, Bhagavan says, even though I am doing everything, People do not acknowledge this. It doesn't matter to me. Ye pyanya devata bhaktaha shraddhaya achyutum ichati 
तस्य तस्य अचलाम श्रद्धाम तामेव विदताम इस दया सागर इन दैट वे दट इवन इफ दो पीपल हू डू नॉट अक्नॉलेज मी बट वर्शिप सम अदर फॉर्म ऑफ गॉड्स छोटा मोटा वंस भगवान भगवान ही आर भगवत भगवदगीता पोर्ट्रेस भगवान कृष्णा नॉट एज एन इंडिविजुअल इज अ ब्रह्मस्वरूप परमात्मा परमेश्वर है द लॉर्ड ऑफ ऑल गॉड्स आल्सो एंड सम ऑफ द गॉड्स हैव गॉन लिमिटेड पावर्स एंड दोस आर सीकिंग ओनली दैट वर्शिप ओनली दैट पर्टिकुलर फॉर्म ऑफ गॉड एंड इन हिंदुइजम वी हैव प्लेंटी हनुमान है राम जी है शिव जी है यह सरस्वती लक्ष्मी काली सो वी हैव स्पेसिफिक डिपार्टमेंट एंड वी वॉन्ट दैट वी वॉन्ट ए अवर कॉन्ट्रैक्ट टू बी साइंड प्रॉपरली यू गो टू बालाजी एंड देर इज इन इन आंध्र प्रदेश देर इज कॉल्ड वन पर्टिकुलर गॉड विच इज मेंट फॉर वीजा visa venkateshwar i think so visa venkateshwar because if you go for visa you have to go there and he takes care of all visa problem yeah i'm not joking eh? you go to visa venkateshwar there is you will find in web the where it is and if you are your son is not getting married will you go to hanuman ji so oh, no way yeah. <laughs> Hanuman ji is not meant for blessing you for marriage. You, know? <laughs> you go to probably to Lakshmi or Vishnu. आपको वैराग्य चाहिए तो शिवजी के पास जाना है. So there are specific departments. Sir, Bhagwan says I am the one who actually gave power to all of them. ये भी अन्य देवता भक्ता हा. even those people who are worshiping other forms of god for whatever reason they also shraddhaya architum ichati those who are doing it with great shraddha tasya tasya for those people who are worshiping with faith because worship means faith you cannot do a worship without having the faith that this bhagwan this particular form of god is listening to my voice my request my prayer my plea and accordingly will bless me with that with that faith only you go to any temple tasya tasya achalam shraddham to them the faith that is needed to worship that form of god i will give i am the one who is giving that <clears throat> and when do we really get faith in anything when we find some rating in return out of our act of worship one says that i give the appropriate results so that they start to have that shraddha in god because what we cannot accomplish now what we anyone can accomplish in this world only he can do it we must have this very clearly in our mind jo hum मनुष्य में मनुष्य 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 लोग नहीं कर सकते नॉट एनी बडी कैन डू दट इज ऑलरेडी टेकन केयर बाई द लॉ वॉट ई वी कैन नॉट डू ई डस एंड इफ यू ओपन अवर आईस एंड सी नाइंटी नाइन परसेंट ऑफ द थिंग्स इज नॉट डन बाई ह्यूमन बींग नॉट एनी बडी इन दिस वर्ल्ड एस आई सेट रेन यू क्रिएटेड सन मून Uh, inside our body whatever is happening those who are studying medicine will know open your open anybody's body you see the complexity with which it is there the most complex system forget about brain brain is a complete another network altogether how and we human only imitate that the complexity of human brain what has led to the discovery of chips microchips is even the smallest little thing is able to process the information is because it's a, a very what do you call remote 
लिमिटेड रिप्लिका ऑफ ह्यूमन ब्रेन इन सिग्निफिकेंट रिप्लिका रिप्लिका सो एवरीथिंग अराउंड अस व्हेन यू स्टार्ट लुकिंग एट इट इनविजिबल हैंड ऑफ द लॉर्ड इज वर्किंग सो मच so he says those people who are worshiping with so much shraddha sataya shraddhaya yuktah tasya aradhanam ihate those people who have this faith in a particular form of god they start to have the worship of it regularly labade cha tad kaman maya eva vihitan hitha whatever they get from any form of god actually is from me only he is not for boasting himself he says that everything comes from me you know that aisa nahi hai know that i am the source even if you don't directly worship uh, i am alone he is giving everything to the world through many way many channels <coughs> hmm So, like a teenager says, "Oh, my out of pocket, what is it called? Pocket money. Today, my pocket money is not refilled. Daddy, what are you doing? Daddy only is putting that money there. Daddy or mummy is putting the money. It's not just bank is giving it to you. Somebody is putting it there. That is why it is said. Now, take it in the right sense, you know." this marriage was going on <clears throat> and the father of the daughter had tears in his eyes so the bridegroom thought because he is giving away his daughter to me so she he is feeling so emotional so he went to him and said i know you are very emotional about giving your daughter to me he said that is not why i am crying it is not a cry out of anguish it's cry out of joy John, yeah, finally, I'm getting my credit card back <laughs> after a long time. <laughs> anyway, okay. So, <clears throat> after all, he is the giver. Sarvasya data aham, sarva karma phala data. I am the one who is giver of the results of all action. <laughs> anybody does any action the result of which is given by one parameshwara one bhagavan through many very many channels and you may think that it is coming from there see it is like this <coughs> any part of the house you go open the tap water comes you mean is the water is coming from there or anywhere you put a switch the light is there you mean the light is the current is here so source of current is what source of current is your nearest junction box right from there only the entire house is being elect electricity is being distributed anywhere you put a switch the light is on or the power is coming it's from main sources from the street if you keep on looking at it where is the original source of power Hundreds or maybe more than hundred, five hundred miles away, somewhere it is being generated for the entire city. <clears throat> Edison will take credit for that. Southern California Edison. They say we are the giver of power to the whole Southern California. They, Bhagwan. <laughs> so they give power to all households, all industries, all that. You know. so on may think that uh, that it is local it is not local it's not coming from there it is coming from one source similarly any form of god you worship and anything you get in this world coming from one source usme shraddha hona chahiye so bhagwan says ये पन्यदेवता भक्ता यजंते श्रद्धयान्विता कौंते यजंती 
அவிதி பூர்வகம் எனி ஃபார்ம் ஆஃப் காட் யுவர் வர்ஷிப்பிங் இன்டைரக்ட்லி யுவர் வர்ஷிப்பிங் ஓன்லி யூ மே நாட் நோ இட் பட் தட் டசன் மீன் தட் ஐ ஹாவ் டு அசர்ட் மை செல் ஐ டோன்ட் பகவான் சேஸ் ஐ டோன்ட் அசர்ட் பிகாஸ் ஐ நோ எனி ஃபார்ம் ஆஃப் ஐ காட் யுவர் வர்ஷிப் ஆக்சுவலி யுவர் வர்ஷிப்பிங் மீ ஓன்லி so therefore i will start i will give what you need whether you know it or not whether you acknowledge it or not you you whether you understand it or not i am the one who is giving this so bhagavan is daya sudha and so daya sudha varsha is the reign of compassion love for the entire creation and the one who shows that is bhagavad gita through bhagavad gita bhagavan is informing the entire world you please understand see one one thing about bhagavad gita is compared to upanishads upanishad does not talk about this glory of bhagavan though it gives correct knowledge but that devotion to bhagavan takes place only when you read bhagavad gita mm because he directly talks in upanishad he is talking to you through the rishis who meditated upon him and what they have understood is they are talking about it but here he is directly saying this to, him, to everybody i am telling you in fact in the chapter 10 bhagavan krishna says that all these rishis and munis are none other than what i created and they whatever knowledge they have it is only i gave so what we read in upanishads as the highest knowledge is none other than the lord has given to them and that comes to us as upanishadi upadesha but when bhagavan himself is directly talking swayam bhagavan by bhagavan himself is talking about this so obviously more authenticity is there in this therefore geeta is glorified as om daya sudha varshinyai namaha <coughs> next one is hari pada prema dhayinyai namaha prema when it is said usually it is love and in today's world the word love is been more misused than used properly let us say you say i love my work ah uh, this i i love my profession when you say right i love my profession on the same breath if you say i love my wife is it the same if it is same your wife will beat you to death there because loving your work is a different category than loving a, a wife or loving your children i love my children i love my wife maybe same category then you say i love the dog so you don't say on the same breath so she will say you mean to say your love for dog is as same as your love for me no no it's a different degree altogether but apart from all these things when you say i love bhagavan it is not the same category that love is bhakti so prema becomes bhakti when you have respect reverence adoration glorification worshipful attitude prayerful attitude see you know say i love my wife it doesn't mean i'm i am i have a prayerful attitude towards i say you understand the difference there even though emotion is the same but the degree is different i love my work does not mean it is not in the same way you can say i love my bhagwan bhagwan's worship or the love for bhagwan is not as the same category as your love for your neighbor or love for your work because you change the work also sometimes i am bored with this thing i will do it. i will change my work change my profession or change whatever but in the same way you don't do with the lord because of the respect the reverence the 
the, the connectivity that you have with the Lord. And that prema, what does it mean? Here it says, Hari Pada Prema. Hari ka jo pada hai. Pada means two meaning. Pada and Pada. <coughs> pada means feet. Pada means abode. Hari Pada, Pada hi Pada hai. Actually, Bhagawan's feet itself is the abode. For Bhakta, Bhagawan's feet itself is the abode. That's why Pada Puja we do, Pada Darshanam we look for, Haripada Darshanam. When you go to any temple, Bhagavan's feet itself is a great uh, place of adoration. You surrender there, you offer everything there. Hmm. <coughs> In our Hindu literature, Bhakti literature, there are four kinds of prema which leads to moksha is given. Here, Pada Prema means the love for the abode of the Lord means reaching the abode of the Lord. Uh, that is called moksha. So, in our literature, what we find, there are four kinds of moksha talked about. Sarupya, Salokya, Samipya, and Sayujya. Sarupya means taking the form similar to God. Samipya means going to the proximity of the Lord. Salokya means being in the abode of the Lord, meaning in the same loka. And Sayujya means merging with God. Sarupya, <coughs> Samipya, um, Salokya, Sayujya. It is like when we have great love and regard for someone, uh, we imitate. Right? Think about it. Many of them, those who are, you know, even among the youngsters also, hairstyle like, the hero they like. Don't they do that? Like this. Whatever, they keep on changing. According to the hero, whatever he does, which they like, or not necessarily a film hero, it can be sports, it can be anybody else. <clears throat> they wear the similar dress, they wear the similar hairstyle. Is it not Sarupya? Sarupya Prem hai. They don't look like him, walk like him, talk like her, behave like her, sing like her, whatever. These are all Sarupya Prem. And let us say that person of adoration is coming to your, or you have a similar set of people who are all having same hero worship of that particular person. You want to be in the company of that, those people, right? Salokya. Like this particular thing, I also, then they have, no, they don't know the time, how it passes, they go on talking about the person of, person of interest, or POI, and person of Person of love. Because we would like to be in the company of people who have the similar interest. And if you come to know that particular, nowadays, what is that? Some lady, some singer, I don't remember, some tailor or something. I first thought some tailor is coming. So, what are the many tailors are there? <coughs> I don't know about that. So, I have no idea. I don't know. The last name is Tail. Coming to town, crazy though, become. Because they want to be there, Samipya. <laughs> you can see in the video, no, 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 I want to go there, stand there like a crazy one there, standing there, dancing out. I want to be in the proximity, you take a picture also. Right? Wife, no, what is it called? Selfie, and put it in your Instagram. So, and then proudly put it in Facebook. I was with this person. Nowadays, you can, A, you can fake that also, so you can do that. So, that is Samipya. Oh, and then finally, of course, it is, you know, you get to be the closest associate in Sayujya. I mean, Sayujya actually means merging. 
And so, in the case of Bhagavan also, there are these four, Sarupya, Salokya, Samipya and Sayujya. Bhagavan Krishna explains all the four. So, here, Punya Karma Palam Salokyam. To reach the abode of the Lord, the method that is given by Bhagavan is, do the karma action of the meritorious nature to reach him, to reach up to abode. He says, karma jam buddhi yukta hi palam tyaktva mani shinah janma bandhavi nirmukta ha vatam gachanti anamayam. Anamayam padam gachanti. Faultless abode they reach. Janma karma vinir muktaha. Those who have become freed from endless cycle of janma and karma. Birth, action, leading to birth, action, leading to birth, action. This is karma, it is called janma karma falar. So janma karma uh, bandha vinir muktaha. Janma bandha vinir mukta means where they are no more bound to buy further action, further birth, further action, further birth. How? Buddhi yukta hi. By correct thinking. Karma jam phalam tektva. By that giving up the anxiety about the results of action. Buddhi yukta hi. By the para proper understanding, that is what is called karma yoga. So, karma yoga margena, by the practice of karma yoga, punya karma palam sadokyam. The abode of the Lord is reached when a person becomes free of the anxiety of the result of action and does action without the, you know, mind. Preoccupied with anything else, they will reach the abode of, of the Lord Himself. This is called Salokya Prema. Bhagavan's love, as though you are in the world of Bhagavan. What is the world of Bhagavan? Where there is no anxiety, there is only peace. Mind is at rest. When the mind becomes rest, only when there is absence of dichotomy in the mind. Absence of split. What is the split in the mind? Split in the mind is will I get it? Will I not get it? Will I get it? Will I not? The anxiety splits your mind. When you say splitting headache, that means <laughs> your mind is restless, agitated. <clears throat> While doing the action, your mind is anxious about the result. You are not able to concentrate. So, Falatya again. Eh? Salokya Prem, Bhagavan's abode you reach. Bhagavan says here yeah, clearly. Next one is Upasanena, Upasanaya Sarupyam. Bhagavad Upasana, worship of God, takes you to the form of God. So, therefore, you see, in, the, in our tradition, if you are going to a temple of Shiva, and if you are worshipping Bhagavan, Shiva, then you must wear the uh, Vibhuti on your forehead. Because he is wearing. What Bhagavan is wearing, you wear. Don't wear um, uh, a snake and all to go there. But at least in a certain things you have to do. He is wearing Vibhuti and you also wear. If you are going to Bhagavan Narayana's place, then you wear Nama. Because he is wearing Nama. Chandan, he is wearing Chandan. Sarupi. You are emulating his qualities, emulating his personal traits. Shiva Bhutva Shivam Yajeta. It is said, become Shiva while you are worshipping Shiva. That's why Nyasa, if you look at it, the chanting of Karanyasa in Rudram, it is to invoke his form in every part of your body. Prajanane Brahma Tishtatu. So, you will say every part of the body, you invoke various forms of gods to reside in your body. That is Sarupya. 
you're offering your body for the lord to take over so sarupya when it is happen upas and bhagwan here says brahman the supreme is my abode <coughs> i am the one who is having brahma pada and this brahma pada is reached uh, by upasana and what upasana omkar upasana he says yadaksharam veda vidho vadanti vishanti yad vita vishanti yad yad yo vita raga yadichanto brahmacharyam charanti ते पदम संग्रहेन प्रवक्ष्ये इट इज फ्रॉम कटोपनिषद बट ही पिक्स अप फ्रॉम देयर ये अक्षरम दैट अक्षर दैट ओम वेद विदह वदन्ति दोस हु पीपल हैव रेड वेदास दे स्पीक अबाउट विशन्ति एंड एंटर इनटू दैट व्हेन यत यतयह वीतरागाह वन दोस हु डू नॉट हैव any more attachment to things they are able to enter into that point of om by their mind free of all attachments edichanto brahmacharyam charanti desiring which alone they have self control tatte padam sangrahena that very abode i will tell you in brief omityekaksharam brahma so omkara upasana chanting of om brings the brahma bhava in your person that is called sarupya prerna omkara swarupa one comes to have the recognition of one's own soul is none other than brahman which is of the nature of om when you utter the om you are actually emulating all, all those very form and characteristics of the brahman Tonkar upasana is method of having sarupya prema. Uh, so salokya prema through karma. Sarupya prema is a by upasana. Bhakti phalam samipyam. You want to go and have the company of the Lord. See all the gopikas. they never studied or they didn't do omkara upasana they didn't do the karma yoga kuch nahi what did they do what did they do you saw in that krishna leela thing that we had they just left everything whatever they were doing the moment they hear the flute of the lord chal chhod do sab even what they were doing they just leave it what they just want to be at his presence just be with him and listen to his wonderful flute he is playing with great joy the anand rasa so he says sarva karmanya bi sada kurvano matya pashraya all actions they do knowing me as the ultimate support for everything mat prasadad avapnodi my by my grace they get what shashvatam padam avyayam the eternal abode they get by doing all that they do but keeping me in their mind keeping me as the support once they have me as the very support of all action they cannot they leave their mind away from me that is true bhakti and that is true abode of the lord abode of the lord is not a, a some vishnu loka or one of those called that as ha uh, uh, where is bhagwan vishnu vaikuntha bhagwan krishna says in bhagavatam vaikunte navasami i am not in vaikuntha i am not in some abode yatra yatra mama bhaktaha gayante wherever my devotees are singing tatra tatra vasami there only am i am not saying somewhere else from wherever they are singing wherever they are remembering me there i am so mat vipasraya keeping me in mind when they do their actions whatever they are doing mat prasada i make sure avapnodi they reach 
శాశ్వతం పదం దటర్నల్ అబౌట్ అవ్యయం ఇంపెరిషబుల్ వన్ ఐ గివ్ దమ్ ఐ ఎమ్ దేర్ సో దట్ ఈస్ భక్తి ఫలం సాలోక్యం అబౌట్ ఆఫ్ ద లార్డ్ బై డివోషన్ డివోషన్ బీయింగ్ రిమెంబరెన్స్ ఆఫ్ ద లార్డ్ వెరీ ఇంటెన్స్లీ ఇన్ వేర్ ఎవర్ కండిషన్ విచ్ ఎవర్ కండిషన్ ద్వారా జ్ఞాన ఫలం సాయుధ్యం knowledge merges you with him thereafter jnani to atmai me madham between jnani and me there is no difference at all i have given myself to him he is he is me i am him there is no difference ayujya means what union in which no difference so he says tadapadam tat parimargitavyam yasmin gata na నివర్తంతి భూయ ఫిఫ్టీన్ చాప్టర్ తద పదం దట్ పర్టికులర్ పదం వాత్ పరిమార్గితవ్యం యు స్టార్ట్ వాకింగ్ ఇన్ అండ్ వాట్ ఈస్ దట్ పదం ఎస్ మిన్ గత ఇన్ విచ్ వన్ హూ హెవ్ గర్ గాన్ న నివర్తంతి భూయ దే కెనాట్ కమ్ బ్యాక్ సో గురుదేవ్ ఇస్ సే గోయింగ్ టువర్డ్స్ గాడ్ ఈస్ వన్ వే స్ట్రీట్ you cannot come back once you start taking one step you will take two steps towards he is waiting from the time the soul has been coming into manifest bhagwan is waiting how many of you are coming with me coming to me thero thero kaam hai bhagwan says if you take one step i take two steps so you faster you go more fast you bhagavan will come to in gadgatva na nivartante having reached where there is no return that's why we are very worried you know ki bhagavan swami ji i want moksha but uh, can i do it next birth please this i have you know i'm not sure about this one you know my wife is you know will feel very bad my husband will not be ready for esmin gatah na nivartanti bhuyah tameva cha adyam purusham prabadye yata pravrtihi prasada prani tameva cha adyam purusham he is a very our original being prapadye i salute yatah from whom alone the entire creation has come yet a pravrutti hi prasrda purani who are the people who can reach there so jnana marga requires you to do a lot of things nirmana moha jita sanga dosha adhyatma nitya vinivrutta kama dvandvair vimukta sukadukta samnyai gachyantya mooda padam avyam tat మాన మోహ నిర్మాణ మోహ నో ప్రైడ్ నో డెల్యూషన్ జిత సంగ దోషా అండ్ లీవింగ్ అవే ఆర్ సంగ దోష దే డిఫెక్ట్ ఆఫ్ అటాచ్మెంట్ అధ్యాత్మ నిత్యా ఎవర్ అబాయిడింగ్ ఇన్ దేర్ నాలెడ్జ్ ఆఫ్ అధ్యాత్మ మీ నివృత్త కామా వేర్ దేర్ డిసైర్స్ ఆఫ్ కమ్ టు అనే ద్వంద్వైర్ విముక్తా freed from all the dualities like what sukha dukkha samnyehi like sukham cha dukkham cha gachantya moodaha amoodaha undeluded one they go padam avyayam that ari padam that bhagavan support avyayam again and again points out that eternal form they go not coming back means what sayuj there is no more return is no more coming back <clears throat> so this way bhagwan has given hari pada prema and bhagavad gita hari pada prema pradhayanye namaha one who gives the guidance how to reach the hari pada bhagwan's abode and the last one we see today is shri pradaye namaha shri you sh- actually is translated as prosperity but prosperity is also temporary 
any kind of gaining will some time or the other will find itself depleted. And we hope and believe when I gain weight, I will deplete weight also. <laughs> so certain gains we don't want to leave. Certain gains we want to leave because certain gains are pain. <laughs> certain gains are not pain. We don't complain. But when we have more bodily weight, we complain because it is a pain. But certain gains we do not want to lose. But Prakriti is such, anything that you gain, you lose. Anything you lose, again you gain. Uh, you may be fasting, you may be doing dieting, you may be exercising. Oh, I'm Swamiji, 1st January I decided, you know, and every day I stand on the scale to see how much I am losing. But what to do, Swamiji? One party I go, done. That is immediately three pounds up there. <laughs> I took, she took me for three weeks to get out of that. One night it will work. That gain is real pain. So, Shreyas is what is called Shri. True prosperity is that which is the ultimate good. Bhagavan therefore uses the word Shreya in place of Shri. Shreya means that which is good, which is good forever. You know, when the second chapter of Bhagavad Gita, when Arjuna says that, Shreyo Bhoktum Bhai Shamabhi Haloke Hatvartha Kamaans Guru Niheva Bunjiya Bhogan Rudira Pradikta Then Guru Na Hatva Hi Mahanubhama Shreyo Bhoktum Bhai Shamabhi Haloke Then killing my own people, it is better, ultimately good, if I go and beg and survive. Think about it, a Kshatriya, beg and survive. How, you know, how much he came down in his thinking? His Clarity is not there. He thinks that begging in the street and surviving is better than fighting the war. Baiksham Bhoktum Shreya. Begging and surviving is better. This is, this is the conclusion of Arjun. Bhagavan says, What are you talking? Dharmyad yudhyad shreya anyad kshatriyasya na vidyat. Arjun, what is shreyas, you know? Dharma yudha. That is shreyas, not digging on the street, you kshatriya. See, our Gurudev, kshatriya paper. <coughs> when he was taught Upanishad, etc., when he decided to come and start talking to the people, his own guru said, why are you going there? Be peacefully in the abode of Himalayas, meditate. Guru said, I am a Kshatriya. What is a Kshatriya Dharma? Do the good to the people till the last blood, last drop of blood. I cannot remain quiet. But to do till the last breath of my life, what will be useful to the world? And therefore, he gave this message to the world. Even to us, he said, never sit quiet. Keep doing what is good to the world. Don't become a parasite. Because during those times, many people have a misunderstanding. Even during Shankaracharya's time also. Sudhara nimittam bahukrutha veshaha. For the sake of filling, filling the belly, people have taken to sannyas. He says, sannyasa is not a parasite living. It is not just to be a burden in the society. Open the mouth three times a day, somebody will feed you. Do the proper work and then you deserve to survive in this world. So he proved it till the last moment of his life. Never a day. If I rest, he said, I rust. So, here is the message. He says, 
Dharmyadyuddha shreyonyate kshatriyasya na vidyate. Here, Dharma Yuddha does not mean you take the bow and arrow and start fighting with everybody. Anywhere you find where you can go and correct it, do it. You may not go and correct the society by, you know, like a, a, a policeman going and correcting with, the, you know, keeping the law and order in his hand and then going. No, you can advise the people right away and then stop them from being, being wrong. You as a Balvear teachers also, what you are trying to do, making sure that the children who are there studying, at least don't think wrong. That is just your dharma, you are doing that. As a parent, you should do that. Wherever dharma is established, in whichever way you can establish. A Brahmana would give advice through the scriptures. A Kshatriya will roll up the skin, roll up the sleeves and say, Come on, I will fight you out if you do wrong things. So, in whichever way, in the business world also, do the right way of living and then demonstrate to the people. When you earn right, you can have the right to spend it right. So in every word, every but that's why he says Shreyan Swadharmo Bigunaha Paradharma Sanushtitat. Indeed, Shreyas is doing your Swadharma, even if it is comparatively lesser in degree of uh, uh, meritoriousness. Doesn't matter. Whatever be the field in which you are, that is your field of Dharma. Shreyan Swadharmo Bigunaha. Paradharmat Svanushtitat Svadharme Nidhanam Shreya Paradharmo Bhayava Clearly points out what is Shreyas. Even dying in your own field of activity is better than doing something else which only causes fear. And he says for all of them there is only one thing that causes ultimate good. What is it? Kama Krodha Lobair Vimuktaha Acharati Atman Shreyaha Yadi Param Dapim. Those, whoever it be, three things if you avoid, you are going to attain ultimate good. Kam, Krodh, Lobh. Desire, anger, and greed, if you leave, Atmani Acharati Atman Shreyaha. Such a person who is interested in leaving these three enemies in your heart, you are actually knocking the door of Shreyas. True prosperity doesn't leave you. And the true prosperity is ultimate good is the inner freedom, the ultimate joy, ultimate oneness with oneself, where the inner enemies like anger, lust, greed, etc. have no more place in your abode. That is the ultimate shreya. Yes. So, Bhagavad Gita gives Sri Pradayai Namaha. It gives the greatest prosperity by advising us to do so. Thus, therefore, we have seen glimpse of Bhagavad Gita. The whole intent is that once you understand the glory of Bhagavad Gita, every page, every verse that you read will have some message for us. We don't need to go anywhere else. Ted talk and all, you don't need to listen. <laughs> if you only read two verses of Bhagavad Gita every day and look at it carefully, contemplate upon its content, you will find you have got a guidance for the day. That's what Mahatma Gandhi has said, whenever I had confusion in my mind, I just opened the Bhagavad Gita, whichever be the verse there, I read that got an answer. I am so clear about it now. So, we will never get confused or become indecisive if we have the constant guidance available to us. Bhagavad Gita is that ma mother who will very lovingly advise you in any situation what you need to do. Om Sarve Bhavantu Sukhinaha, Sarve Santu Niramayaha, Sarve Bhadrani Pashyantu, Makaschit Dukkha Bhattavet, Om Shanti 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 Harihi Om Shri Gurubhyo Namaha, Harihi Om.